Hey everybody, it's Blue Toad, and welcome. To the Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. I love this title screen. It's such a classic part of my childhood. And this theme. But anyway, I guess we should get started. So, let's select a file and put in our name is Link, I guess, just because that's the classic. I'm pretty sure, though, if you just leave it empty, it doesn't let you automatically select Link, I don't think, so. But I'll just select Link here manually, so. And, and let's start. In the vast, deep forest of Hyrule, long have I served as the guardian spirit. I am known as the Deku Tree. The children of the forest, the Kokiri, live here with me. Each Kokiri has his or her own guardian fairy. However, there is one boy who does not have a fairy. Navi, Navi, where art thou? Come hither. O oh, Navi the fairy, listen to my words, the words of the Deku Tree. Dost thou sense it, the climate of evil descending upon this realm? Malevolent forces, even now, are m mustering to attack our land of Hyrule. For so long, the Kokiri Forest, the source of life, has stood as a barrier, deterring outsiders and maintaining the order of the world. But before this tremendous evil power, even my power is as nothing. It seems the time has come for the boy without a fairy to begin his journey. The youth whose destiny it, it is to lead Hyrule to the path of justice and truth. Navi, go now, find our young friend and guide him to me. I do not have much time left. Fly, Navi, fly. The fate of the forest, nay, the world depends upon thee.
Hello, Link, wake up! The Great Deku Tree wants to talk to you. Link, get up! Hey, come on! Can Hyrule's destiny really depend on such a lazy boy? You finally woke up. I'm Navi the Fairy. The Great Deku Tree asked me to be your partner from now on. Nice to meet you. The Great Deku Tree has summoned you, so let's get going right now. Sure, I can do that. I can also, I believe, uh, press C up, which on a control stick is just the right stick up. Oh my goodness, that actually changes that in here. That's a weird change pers of perspective that you can do, apparently. Because we can look from the top down's perspective of the, of the room, or we can look at it as... I don't know, third person down here. But anyway, let's head on out this way. To Kakiri Forest. Yahoo! Hey, hi, Link! Is this Toad? Anyway, we can climb down this ladder like this. Or, instead of doing that, we could also press the A button to drop down. Or, we could do it the way that I would normally do it, is by holding, uh, ZL, I guess. Or just the Z button. And then moving backwards with the left control stick, and pressing A to do a backflip, which means we can just skip that entirely. Anyway, we can also use the Z button to target specific things that Navi is highlighting with the arrow above it to lock onto targets, I guess. I think you can switch between- there's an option on the title screen to change between lock on and hold on the Z button, possibly, so it depends on what you want to do. I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. But anyway, let's press A to speak. Wow, a fairy! Finally, a fairy came to you, Link. Wow, that's great news. I'm so happy for you. Now, you're a true Kokiri, Link. Is that right? The Great Deku Tree has summoned you? It's quite an honor to talk to the Great Deku Tree. I'll wait for you here. Get going. Go see the Great Deku Tree. Can do. We can also press up on, uh... The C buttons, or C stick, to talk to Navi. As long as Navi's got her icon flashing above the C buttons on the top right of the screen. The Great Deku Tree has summoned you. Please come with me. Okay, can do. Also, do you say anything if I. No, okay. Well, anyway, if we use our C up now without Navi's icon, we can actually look in first person mode to just look around at everything, which is a little bit wobbly. To look around with the left stick because it's not, it doesn't lock onto place. If you so, if you let go of the control stick, it'll just go back to the default. But anyway, we can also run through this grass over here because in here is some rupees for us to collect. This is the currency of Hyrule, so we're gonna need it in places that we go to. Uh, A by the stone, pick it up. A by the stone, pick it up. <laughs> Mean old Mido, he made me pick up all uh, the rocks in front of his house. So what he's saying by that is we can actually pick up these rocks here by pressing A next to them. 
and actually pick them up and throw them to destroy them. I believe there's a chance that these will drop three rupees out of them. Possibly some other stuff, but not right now, apparently. There we go. Got some actual rupees. Green ones are worth one, and these blue ones that we can find around the place are worth five. So it's going to be worth picking those up, wherever we can. Now we can also read these signs here that I haven't been checking to see what they say. It's like talking to a person, it's just a sign. House of the Great Mido, boss of the Kokiri. Well, let's go into his house and see what's in here. Because there are actually four treasure chests in here that we can pick up, which have a couple of rupees and a heart in it, a recovery heart in it. But we don't need those, so we're going to just leave those for now. I believe one of them is a blue rupee and the rest of there's two greens and a recovery heart, which doesn't really do anything for us at the moment, so... Now I wanted to check the sign in front of Link's house just real quick. It usually doesn't take long to get to where we actually need to go, but I'm just gonna take my time. Link's house, okay. Also, I like how there's this, like, carving drawing thing here. Also, what does this imply that there's this dinosaur thing here? And something next to it? It's probably a reference to something that I don't know, and I'd love to know what that means. But anyway, let's go. Uh, mm, guess we should go to where the Great Deku Tree is. Which we, we can kind of work our way back from the cutscene that we saw. Just ahead, Great Deku Tree's Meadow. Well, let's do that. Go that way then. Except that this guy's in the way, so we can't get past him. Hey you, Mr. No Fairy. What's your business with the Great Deck Tree? Without a fairy, you're not even a real man. Wait, what? You've got a fairy? Say what? The Great Deck Tree actually summoned you. What? Why would he summon you and not the Great Mido? This isn't funny. I don't believe it. You aren't even fully equipped yet. How do you think you're going to help the Great Deku Tree without both a sword and shield ready? What? You're right. I don't have my equipment ready, but... If you want to pass through here, you should at least equip a sword and a shield. Sheesh. Well, we can't go that way yet, so let's go in a different direction to start off then. Whose house is this? House of Twins, which I guess makes sense considering that the bit up here is kind of split in two, which is pretty cool. But anyway, let's head on in. And there's two pots in here which we can pick up and break. They're kind of like rocks. One has a green rupee and the other one has a blue rupee in it. It's good to know because the blue rupee helps us get to our goal a lot faster. Hello. My sister took some rupees and went shopping at the store that has a red roof. Teehee. Speaking of rupees, a green one is worth one and a, bl a blue one is worth five and a red one is worth twenty. Hee <laughs> hee. Well, that's important to know because we haven't seen any red rupees. And I don't think we are going to see any for a while. But anyway, if we jump across here and then to this little platform over here or nearby it, we get a blue rupee from that. But it only works if you go from inside that house and out again to do that, so... And I believe if we jump across here... We also get a blue rupee. It doesn't matter which way you go, as long as you do it once, it will give you that blue rupee. Stepping stones in the pond. If you boldly go in the direction you want to jump, you will leap automatically. If you hop around the stones, you'll become happier. Looks like this is the building with the red roof, which is the Kokiri shop. We have original forest goods. Hey Link, look this way. Look over here with Z and talk to me with A. So we can target this person to talk to them. Which we couldn't otherwise talk to them, so. Yes, yes, that's how you use a fairy. It's so great that you finally have a fairy partner. I'll teach you how to talk to people using your fairy. When a fairy flies near a person or a thing, press Z to look in that direction. If you use Z targeting, you can, which I, I'm gonna, I, I forever will call it Z targeting, even if you're not, don't use a Z button to target something. 
You can talk to people from a distance, like we're doing now. When you have nothing that you can can target, ah, uh, you can press C just to look forward. Try it. I will do that. But anyway, in the shop here, where you can actually get a blue rupee for, by going back here, it's very well hidden. And I think if I press up, cut doesn't do anything here, so. Ah, uh, but anyway, let's see what you have to say. This shop, it sells things you can get in the forest for free, Teehee. Do you know how to use the Deku Shield, Teehee? When you get the shield, press Start to get into the subscreens. Select the equipment subscreen with Z or R. On the equipment subscreen, choose the item you want to equip and press A to equip that item. Once you equip it, hold it up with Z, uh, no, with R and change its angle with the control stick. The left, left stick. T here. Anyway, let's talk to the shopkeeper here. Welcome. Talk to the owner. We sell shields, but not swords. Oh, that's a shame because I need swords. There's a lot of other things here that we can't actually buy right now because we don't need them. Like Deku Seeds, 30 pieces for 30 rupees. And you can use them as bullets for your slingshot. You can't buy them unless you have a slingshot. Well, we don't have a slingshot. There's also arrows, a recovery heart, which will refill one heart container, which we have three of at the top of the screen. Each one is four, four quarters. But that's not going to do much for us at the moment, so... There's also Deku Nuts. Throw them to stun your enemies. You can carry only a limited amount of them. Also, a Deku Stick. A long branch gathered from the Great Deku Tree. You can use it as a weapon, but it will break. And the Deku Shield, which is 40 rupees, so we don't have quite enough yet. Once equipped, you can defend with R. If set on fire, it will burn. All important things to know, but I don't have enough rupees right now, so I need to exit the shop, so let's do that can press B on the owner to just leave. Anyway, whenever you go in and out of a building, this rupee for jumping across here will respawn, so that we can get that nice and quickly. Uh, let's see. Oh, you have a fairy now. That's great, Link. What? You've been called by the Great Deku Tree? What an honor. He may give you a special gift, Teehee. That's because the Great Deku Tree is our father. The Forest Guardian, and he gave life to all of us Kor Kokiri. I almost called them Koroks, which is funny. Anyway, just need a few more rupees and we can get the shield, but... There's a few other things I want to look at as well, so... Let's go over here. There's a lot of people to talk to that I don't really need to. And I don't usually, because it usually takes 20 minutes to actually... ...complete everything we need to do here. And, like, when I mean everything, I mean everything. Anyway, forest folk shall not leave these woods. You're not allowed to leave the forest. The great Deku Tree said that if a Kokiri leaves the woods, he or she will die. Well, that's ominous. That's very ominous, actually. Anyway. Oh, a fairy finally came to you. Now you have a lot to learn. These uh, the best place to learn some skills is in the Forest Training Center. It's on the hill just above here. I'll keep that in mind. Well, this is the Forest Training Center, but I'm going to check out this house over here. House of the Know-It-All Brothers. I feel like this is a mistake to go in here. There's also a pot in here. A couple of pots in here. Oh, a green rupee went out of the world. It's sad. We can also change the angle of the screen if we want to. Again, it's gone. <laughs> it's sad. Anyway, if you want to... Oh my goodness. Ah, uh, back. Ah! Also, if you press B on text, it will skip basically everything, so... That's helpful if you want to go through text faster, but also if you want to actually read it, don't press B, basically. <clears throat> if you want to learn about uh, the map and items, just ask me, but don't ask unless you want to hear a long explanation. What do you want to know about? Uh, I feel like I can just explain that on my own, so... Thank you for everything. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure... The other two can... Tell us about other things. Icons? Nah... This, this is really the... Holding your hand... House. But anyway... 
We can leave that for now. Yeah. Definitely a mistake to go there. I'm gonna leave those signs for now. We also have this grass here which we can grab. Except we can't pick it up. So, it doesn't really work. We can also switch between targets here. If there are multiple targets, we can target them. Or switch between them. If you see a arrow, arrow icon above an object, you can target it with Z. In other words, if you press C or when you see uh, the arrow above an object, you can lock onto it. If you press C again, the lock will either release it or it will transfer to the next object with the arrow above it. When you have many enemies in your field of view, if you want to escape, press Z while holding back on the right or left stick to cancel targeting. You can target the stones next to the sign for practice. That's actually interesting that you can just cancel by holding back and Z. I don't actually know that because I usually do something different, I guess. I don't know. But anyway. Hey, let's work on some moves. To jump sideways while Z targeting, press A as you move left or right. Or right left. To do a backflip while Z targeting, press A as you move backwards. To do a roll attack. Uh, while Z targeting, press A as you move forward. While you roll, you can avoid damage. It's very important to know. If you have a sword ready, while Z targeting, you can do a jump attack by pressing A. A jump attack does double damage. You can use Z targeting on the stone next to me. So let's practice. So yes, we can also just roll normally by pressing the A button while moving. But we can also do side jumps with left and right. Pressing the A button. We can do a roll otherwise with the more moving forward and in Z targeting pressing A, but we also have the backflip, which we've already explained, so. We can also get a couple of rupees here by doing some backflips, so. That's also good, so. I think there's a blue rupee around here that I'm missing. But that's okay. I don't know if you need to do it several times or if it just gives it to you. There it is. Got it. Anyway. Hole of Z. Let's go through this small hole. Stand in front of the hole and push forwards on the left stick towards it. When the action icon shows enter, which is the blue A button at the top of the screen, press A to crawl into the hole. Pay attention to what the action icon says. Very important. Anyway, let's enter and crawl through here. It takes a little bit to crawl through here, but that's okay. We can also see the map on the bottom right of the screen showing us that there's an area here, so... It's good to pay attention to that screen. We also have a red arrow that shows the last thing you... Like, last entrance or exit that you came through. And the yellow arrow is you and the direction you're looking, so... Blue rupee there. Viewpoint. While with the Z targeting, you have uh, when you have no object to lock look at. Uh, you can just look forward with Z. Stop moving and then change the direction you're facing or hold down Z for a little while. This can help you get orient or orientated oriented in the direction you want to face. It's quite convenient. If you hold down Z, you can walk sideways while facing straight ahead. Walking sideways can be very important technique in dungeon uh, corridors. Turn around and try this uh, right now. So yes, we can use the uh, Z button to quickly look forward if we need to. It also allows us to move left or right, I guess. Or back, even. Uh, just without the camera changing. Or forward, I guess. So we can go in a straight line. If we really need to. But anyway, we need to avoid this boulder because if we get hit by it... We lose a quarter of a heart of health, so... Probably best avoiding that. But anyway... Visit the House of Know-It-All Brothers to get the answers to all your item-related questions. Well, I'm not going to do that because I can just explain it. Anyway, press A in front of a chest to open it. Big chests like this one have a cool animation. You got the Kokiri Sword on the Equipment subscreen. Select it with the cursor and equip it with A. This is a hidden treasure of the Kokiri, but you can borrow it for a while. Be sure to practice with it before you really fight. So yes, now we have that. We don't have it immediately because we need to go into the pause screen by pressing start. 
Uh, and we can also change screen here by using... Oh, I guess we can use just use the left stick to change page, but we have to go through everything later on. Or we can just use the right or ZL slash Z button to just turn a page instantly. So we have the item screen, the map screen, which is just a huge map of everything in the world that we're going to have to look at. It's also got areas that we can see highlighted by these dots here. The quest status and the equipment screen. And right now we need to equip this Kokiri sword. So let's do that. And also I believe if we press B we can ask if we want to be saved. And we can save, so we won't lose any progress by doing that. So it's good to know. Anyway, we also move fast by uh, side jumping and or moving backwards while using uh, the Z button, so could be good. Now, what uh, a sign said earlier about doing double damage by doing a jump attack is very important to know for moving on. And I'll explain why in a little bit, but the main thing we want to do is probably just practice doing it, so. We can also just cut things with uh, a neutral a B, B thing by pressing B. We can cut things. Uh, we can also stab, I believe, if we hold down Z button and move forward and press B. Uh, we can also just slash in a particular direction we want, depending on how we hold the left stick. Which is very interesting to know. Uh, but also, if we rotate the control stick and press B, we can do a spin attack. Or if we hold down B, we can charge it up and then do a spin attack. Which does the same amount of damage, probably. But anyway. Cut grass with your sword. If you just swing with B, you'll cut horizontally. If you hold Z as you swing, you can cut vertically. Cool. Interesting. All the interesting things. Also, we can just cut the sign in any way we want, basically, which is the most fun thing to do ever, ever basically. Benny, what did this sign say? Thrust attack signs. To thrust your sword, press uh, left stick forward uh, toward your target while Z targeting, then press B. So stabbing, which we have, I already explained. Anyway, if we stab that sign, we actually get a blue rupee, so that's pretty good. Now, I don't know if there's anything else here for us, so let's just keep moving on for now. And let's look at the last few places that are left here. Saria's house. I didn't actually know this was this is Saria's house. Anyway, there are four recovery hearts in here, which recover four quarters of a heart, so. But we already have our health back from being hit by the boulder, so that's pretty good. That meanie Mido made me cut the grass at Saria's house. Mido told Saria he would do it, so he w she would like him. But I'm the one doing all the work. You and Saria are close friends, so will you help me cut the grass? I'll let you keep anything that you find while cutting cutting it. So yes, by cutting grass, we can get items like hearts or rupees. Usually if we need it. So, anyway, there's also some re recovery hearts up there, which I don't know why you'd ever need them. But it's fine. Let's just walk across here. And get to this rupee. And also this person here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Hee hee hee, you came all the way up here. You're a real man. Look, isn't this view pretty? Change your viewpoint with the right stick up, or C up. Uh, so you can look around the forest with the left stick. <laughs> oh, that's funny that talking to her actually makes her hitbox push, push me off if I'm in that position. Anyway. With that, we have 69 rupees. Let's go probably into here now to actually buy that shield. Okay, let's buy that. You got the Deku, a Deku shield. Switch to the equipment subscreen and select it. The shield with a toolkit. It. Press right stick, uh, press R to crouch and defend. If you press R while Z targeting, you can move while defending. No, I don't want to buy anything else. Okay. Well, this has been a pretty good run so far. 
Now I wanted to just quickly check if uh, Sari has anything else to say before we move on. What? Mido won't let you go to see, uh, see the Great Deku Tree? Oh, that bum. I don't know why he's always so mean to everyone. What he said is true, though. The forest strange thing... Uh, the forest. Strange things have been happening here lately. You need to be ready for anything. You'd better find a weapon. You can buy a shield at the shop, but there is only one sword hidden somewhere in the forest. That's actually interesting that there's different text there. I'm glad that I got to see this text while I was here. We can also just exit the menu by pressing start again, but I usually just save and exit that anyway, so... With that, I think that's everything, other than we can actually swim in this water a little bit. But anyway, let's get going. We have to make sure we have our sword and shield actually equipped before we move on, so we have to have them on our back, basically. If you want to see the Great Deku Tree, you should at least equip a sword and a shield. Eh, what's that? Oh, you have a Deku Shield. And what's that? Is that the Kokiri Sword? Good grief. Well, even with all that stuff, a wimp is still a wimp, huh? I, the Great Mido, will never accept you as one of us. Shoot, how did you get to be the favorite of Saria and the Great Deku Tree? Huh. Grumble, grumble. Anyway, let's move forward. We need to be ready with everything we've learned so far. Well, kind of. Because right over here, we get some Deku Bubbers that appear. If we target an enemy and use Navi, it'll give us in information on whatever we're targeting. As long as there's an enemy, anyway. Deku Bubba, though it looks withered, it will hurt you if you touch it. So don't touch it, I guess. Uh, but if we slash it, we can cut its stem and it will give us a Deku Stick. We can set an item to left, uh, down, or right on the C buttons. Uh, hang on. I missed all that text because of pressing the B button. But anyway, we can set that to any of those angles on the right, or C buttons, C stick, whatever. And then when we press that button again, we'll bring it out, we can do that. Uh, but if we tap that button, we can actually swing with it. And the thing about the stick, the Deku Stick, is it actually does more damage than the Kukiri Sword. Especially if you do a jump attack, so... These will be very helpful to have. But they do break, so we can't really just use them all the time, so... Anyway. Great Deku Tree, I'm back. Oh, Navi, thou hast returned. Link, welcome. Listen carefully to what I, the Deku Tree, am about to tell thee. Thy slumber these past moons have been restless and full of nightmares. As the servants of evil gain strength, a vile climate pervades the land and causes nightmares to those sensitive to it. Verily, thou hast felt it. Link, the time has come to test thy courage. I have been cursed. I need you to break the curse with your so uh, with your wisdom and courage. Dost thou have courage enough to undertake this task? Yes, I do. Then enter brave Link, and thou too, Navi. Navi the fairy, thou must aid Link. And Link, when Navi speaks, use right stick to listen well to her words of wisdom. Well, there we go. There's also a couple more uh, Deku Bubbers around here. That we can take out for some more sticks, so. But we don't really need to do that, so let's actually go into the Great Deku Tree. Inside the Deku Tree.
Okay, and now, the thing about these Dekobabas here... Hit it when it lunges at you, and it will stand upright. Cut it quickly to get a Deku Stick. But, well, we can do that. But I believe that possibly if we don't and we just take it out it actually drops a different item so if we don't get it, if we don't cut its stem to kill it we get a deku nut which we've already seen in the shop as well as the deku stick uh, but throwing it 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 will flash and stun the enemy so we can use this to stun enemies we can also set this to a different C button so we can actually use that at the same time so we can just stun enemies like that and that allows us to take out these Deku Bubbers quite nicely actually but anyway each of those uh, items that drop apparently are five so that's interesting we can also cut these plants here to get refills of things which I believe Deku Nuts can pos- No, I don't think- No, no, Deku Nuts can't drop from them. But these plants also regrow, which is interesting. Now, let's either climb up this ladder over here. Oh, hello. Hang on. Navi has information. Look, look, Link. You can see down below this web using a uh, right stick. Well, I don't particularly feel like looking down there. Oh my goodness, I can look- Oh my goodness, inverted controls. That's fine. We can see down there. But I was just, I was just surprised I could look with the stick. We already know how this ladder works, so... But if I go over here to this vine, which is... It goes to the same place. Look at this wall. The vines growing up give it a rough surface. Maybe you can climb it, Link. We can climb it very similarly to a ladder. But we can also move sideways if we want to on it. So that's, uh, helpful to know, I guess. Now, this is just everything here. There's a recovery hut there. We can also jump off of this onto the web. And it kind of rubber bands. Kind of stretchy idea, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Anyway, let's head on up this way. And let's look at these things. Uh, maybe... Or I'll just, hang on, let go of that. I'm learning things that I've never learned in this game before and it's crazy. But anyway, let's open up this important chest because... We get the dungeon map. Press start to get into the subscreen and look at the map subscreen. Blue chambers are places you have already visited. Your current location is the flashing room. Move left stick up or down to select a floor to view. So let's go to the map screen because inside of a dungeon, which this is a our first dungeon, we actually have a different map screen. So we can see the dungeon map is here on the side, so we can see that we have that collected. We can see the ma the uh, the map for rooms we've already been in without it. But as you can see with the map, we can actually see the rooms we haven't been in in and the floors that are all connected to this. So. Anyway, you can see uh, the room that we're on, or the floor that we're in, on the side next to the the floor numbers, with our little blink icon. And yeah, so that's all that for now. And let's go this way. You you can open a door by standing in front of it and pressing A. Pay attention to what the uh, action icon says. That's the blue icon at the top of the screen. It basically just explained how to open a door by standing in front of it and opening it. Basically. Anyway. I just feel like that's very unnecessary. But anyway, let's hold out a shield with R button and repel this Deku Nut back at this Deku Scrub. Ow, ow, ow! Forgive me, Master. If I give you a clue, will you let me go? When you jump off a high cliff, if you hold uh, forward on the control stick, you will roll on the ground when you la land and won't get hurt from the fall. I can't guarantee it will work, though. If the cliff is really, really high, hehe. <laughs> well, try it if you are feeling bold. Wahaha. <laughs> Just need to get close to its uh, spot here on the ground. 
Because once you repel the Deku Nut back at it, it will run around the room. And, but it will try to come back to this spot in the middle, where its, where its sprout is, or whatever. So you just need to stand on that if you can, to get its attention. Anyway, let's go into this next room. Now, if we stand on this platform in front of us by jumping onto it, it will actually fall and break. We can actually go around it by rolling around, which is probably what speedrunners do. You're not supposed to do that, but it's the way I've pretty much done it for a long time. There's also a big chest there, which is going to be important. But also up this vine up here, which is probably very easy to overlook. I didn't know about it until randomizers. There's a small chest, which we just kick open. And we get a recovery heart. It's, again, it's really not that helpful, but I guess if you've lost health health for some reason fighting the Deku Bubbers, then that is useful. You found the fairy slingshot. Kind of spoiled by the shop, kind of. But anyway, press C to take it out and hold it. As you hold C, you can aim with a left stick. Release C to unleash a Deku Seed. If you want to shoot to, uh, right away, when you first press the C button, hold down a little longer to get a seed ready. So yes, I usually set this to C down. I'm pretty sure everyone else will probably do that as well. Uh, but also, we can see that ladder up there. Look, something is hanging up there. It looks like an old ladder. Now, if we broke the platform down there, we're supposed to use that ladder to get up, so... Uh, but I, I'll still show what you're supposed to do, since I probably should. We can see how many of the item we have by the number next to it. If the number is white, it means that it can, you can still get more of the item to fill up. Uh, which, the fairy slingshot has a different item, which we saw in the shop, for refilling it. The maximum number of seeds we can hold right now is 30, so... But anyway, let's bring that out, and we can aim with it in any, any way we want. And it actually stays wherever we aim, so we don't have to worry about letting go of the, the control stick. But anyway, if we target the ladder and use uh, the C button by holding it down, or just tapping it, uh, and then let go, we can fire. So that's what gives us back that ladder if we didn't break this platform, which I usually don't, so, because it's a lot faster. But anyway. It also just skips the whole puzzle there, so. But anyway, let's head back into the main room. And the Deku, or, uh, what's this slingshot called? The fairy slingshot. We can also target onto enemies to shoot at. Which we don't actually need to kill these Skulltillers to get past. Hang on, we'll talk to Navi. Skull wall tiller. Sorry, <laughs> because it's on a wall. Be careful not to touch it. Now, with the skull wall tillers, if we climb in front of their face, where their mouth is, come on, it will turn purple. If we don't, if we stop moving though, when it turns purple, it won't attack us. If it does attack us though, it will move. At us at full speed, so you need to stop immediately as as soon as it turns purple, otherwise it will hit you. But it means we can actually climb up this wall without getting the fairy slingshot. But you will still need the fairy slingshot, so don't don't skip it, basically. Anyway, now that we're up here, we also have Big Skeltalas. Its uh, soft belly is its weak point. Because if we try to attack its face, it just swings side to side and possibly will attack us. And if we get too close to it, it will just attack us anyway. But anyway, let's try to attack its weak point, which is back when it turns around. And we can take them out just like that. Remember, Deku Sticks do more damage than the Kokiri Sword. Especially if you jump attack. Okay, door locked behind us, so we can't get out now. But we do have this switch down here that we can press by standing on top of. It only activates for a limited amount of time though, so we need to be quick jumping across here. Switches will do different things depending on what they're programmed to do, but anyway, let's open up this special chest here. This big chest. And see what we get, because we get... The compass. Now you can see the locations of many hidden things in the dungeon. So if we go back to the map screen now, or just look at the uh, mini-map, we can now see the room, or the floor that has the boss, and where the boss is on that floor. We can also see the compass there on the side. 
Uh, but now, on different floors like this one, we, or in this room, we can see that little orange mark with the line through it kind of thing, in the black outline. That is a treasure chest that we haven't opened yet. So that's going to be important to know, especially because there's, you know, a treasure chest over there. But there's actually something else behind it, which is more important, so... Just take you out. There are decububbers in this room to help you get more sticks and... Uh... Yeah, Deku sticks, basically. The other one on the si other side of the room respawns. That one doesn't, that we just saw. Now, will Navi tell me about this? Yes. It looks like that torch was burning not too long ago. Interesting. We'll, we'll look at that in just a second, but first, I want to go... across here. Since we took out that Skulltula, it's not going to be in a way to get across here. But now, over here, we actually have a gold Skulltula. Which I want to take out nice and quickly. Takes two Deku Seeds to take out with the Slingshot. If we grab it, it gives us a Gold Skulltula token. Uh, proving that we destroyed the Gold Skulltula. We can also target those, so that's important to know for later. Anyway, this chest is, isn't important, it just has a recovery heart. So, anyway, let's keep moving. And now that we're here... The reason that the room gives us infinite Deku Sticks is because if we hold one out, we can run through the torch that's burning to light it up. Uh, but And then we can light up this torch over here to open up the door. If we hold a burning stick too long though, it burns out and we lose that stick. But if you act or start burning it and then bring out your sword, hang on, bring out your sword, it puts the stick away so you don't lose it. It's important to know this, so you can keep as many sticks as possible for other things. Now, I believe you can jump from any of these spots here, but I usually jump from the one that's closest to the heart because that feels safer to me. Just because I've had a lot of times missing this jump. But, if we can manage to get past this thing here, thank you. It only takes two stabs to get rid of that, so it's pretty good. But if we jump from all the way up there, we can actually break that web here and fall down below. If there's water, or we're holding forward while we're falling, and we hit the ground, we can roll. Or we can hit the water and we, we won't take any fall damage, which is important not to take fall damage, because we, we don't want to die, basically. You can take a lot of fall damage, so. There's also two more gold Skulltulas here that we can get, so let's grab those. This one over here, though, is suspended in midair. Also, what is... Navi doesn't say anything, okay. Well, we can roll jump We'll roll off an edge to jump to this one. So there we go. And we can climb up this wall over here to get this other one. But before we do that, if we go to our status, quest status, we can also see how many gold sculptors we've collected here, which we've got two now, so. Very good. We can also see, hang on, if we go over here, the bullet bag that holds 30 Deku Seeds, that's the ammo for our slingshot, so. Just want to point that out. Let's get up this thing to get this gold Skulltor token. Very nice. Now... Let's get up onto this ledge. We can see that there's this gold torch thing here in the web with a chest behind it. If we hit the switch... Turns on the gold torch thing, I guess. And we can get this treasure chest, which is, again... A recovery heart, so we really didn't need that. Sometimes I grab that one if I've ha had any trouble in any fights with any of the enemies. But, usually I don't have to worry about it. But anyway, we can't get up that ledge over there because it's too tall. So we're going to have to find another way around, which is probably by going this way. We, need to, we can run across that bit under the water just there. And we can use the burning stick to get rid of that web there, so we can get this way. Okay, another Deku that we can repel its shot back at it and roll quickly to get close to it. Please forgive me, Master. I'll never do it again. If you spare me, I'll teach you something cool. You will never beat my brothers up ahead unless you punish them in the proper order. The order is 2, 3, 1. 23 is number 1, the number that nobody's ever going to forget ever again. Do you think I'm a traitor? 
Kinda. Anyway, now that he's gone, we can actually use our Deku Seeds to shoot at this ice witch. To activate that and open this door. Gonna see a couple of those in the future. And I've also got this platform that's moving in the water here. But there's a sp rotating spike thing in the middle. So we can't get through that way. After you get into the water, if you hold down A, you can dive. I bet there are some interesting things underwater. And that is true. Because we only have a limited amount of air to dive with. But if we dive at this switch here, we have three seconds of air before we need to go back to the surface for air. We can press that switch down, which lowers the water level. Which, if we can get up here quickly enough, will allow us to get onto this platform going across and get across to the other side of this thing. Please go faster. Oh, please go faster. Don't need to duck here. We can also hear the ticking of the timer before we need to get across. Okay. Pretty sure a jump attack will take them out instantly. This big sculptor. Stand next to this block and grab hold of it with A. While holding A, you can push or pull it. If you stand next to the block and press A while pressing uh, the control stick towards the block, you can climb on top of it. Pay attention to what the action icon says. So yes, we can actually grab this and pull it or push it to move it into place. But we can also just climb onto it by pressing A while moving towards it. And this allows us to actually, hang on, if I do it correctly. This allows us to just jump up here by rolling up. And we can just skip moving it, so. Moving the blocks are fairly slow, so I like to just skip it entirely. Anyway, let's get rid of this Dekibaba. And let's light up these two torches here. There are more de Dekibabas in the room to get more sticks if you need it. Okay, let's keep going. And for some reason, this big sculptor here is backwards to us. We can take it out instantly, which is good for us. If you let it live too long, it will get... It will just turn around again, so... Anyway, it drops some Deku seeds for us. These are small hard seeds that you can use as bullets for your slingshot. Good to know. We can also see above here that there are some things on the top of this ceiling. If I can press the right C button, please. We can also see them dropping little bits of stuff to know that they're there. But if we use our slingshot, we can actually... Come on. Oh, come on. Actually, no. I guess I'm wrong about that. Anyway, if we go underneath them, though... They drop down and have these things that we need to probably, probably avoid. This used to be the scariest room in the game for me, pretty much. It was, I didn't get very far in the game when I was a kid though, so. But anyway, we can get the sticky stick. And I'm going to actually leave that web over there for now. And I'm going to just go this way. Usually you just go around the edge of the thing in the middle of the room on the floor. And you don't have to worry about the enemies. But if they're not that bad. Once you get used to them. Now let's go through this tunnel. And keep moving. Okay. If the camera would follow me, that'd be nice. Now let's move this block, block off the edge here so we have a shortcut up. But also, allows us to get to that torch down there since all the torches up here are slightly raised. So we can't get to them quickly. I believe you can probably jump off this block to get to them. If you really wanted to do that, but I'm just going to open this shortcut because it's going to be useful. Okay, let's light our stick and go the other direction, back across. And if we roll over this web here, it drops us through. There's a few recovery hearts that we can get by swimming over them in the water. But there are also three Deku scrubs here. And we've already been told the code, which is 23 is number one, so we need to hit the middle one. And then the right one. And then the left one. They get stunned after you hit them. If you get them in the wrong order though, they'll just go back to being unstunned. How did you know our secret? How irritating! 
It's so annoying that I'm going to reveal the secret of Queen Goma to you. In order to administer the coup de grace to Queen Goma, strike with your sword while she's stunned. Oh, Queenie. Sorry about that. So let's go into the boss room. There are also uh, plants around the edge of the room to give you more Deku seeds if you need them. It's also helpful to have Deku, uh, Deku nuts and uh, Deku sticks for going to this. But anyway, we're locked in. And if we go over here and look up with the up, see, see up. Parasitic Armored Arachnid, Goma. Now, if we use Deku Nuts, we can stun and then jump attack to do a good amount of damage. I believe it's four damage for doing that. But this is a bigger version of the enemies we saw in that other room that I said that weren't that bad. But now we need to be ready for this because it's going to do some other things, which I want to avoid. Uh, if we let it live too long, come on. If we let it do its thing here, without hitting it with uh, Deku Seeds, it will actually drop the eggs that spawn those little enemies, which are the miniature versions of them. But if we can just attack them, we can get rid of them. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna die if I'm not careful. Okay, let's just finish this up though. Please? Nope. But yes, if we let those eggs stay on the ground too long, they will respawn as the mini enemies. Sorry. But if we can actually shoot her in the eye with the fairy slingshot beforehand, while her eye turns red, like that, we can actually just finish her off like this. So there we go. We get this thing that drops after the boss is defeated. Got a heart container. Your maximum life energy is increased by one heart. Your life energy will be totally filled. So now we have four hearts at the top left of the screen. We also have this blue glowing light that we have to step into now. Well done, Link. Thou hast verily demonstrated thy courage. I knew that thou wouldst be able to carry out my wishes. Now I have yet more to tell ye, wouldst thou listen? Now listen carefully, a wicked man of the desert cast this dreadful curse upon me. This evil man ceaselessly uses his vile sorcerer's powers in his search for the sacred realm that is connected to Hyrule. For it is in that sacred realm that one will find the divine relic, the Triforce, which contains the essence of the gods. Before time began, this before spirits and life existed, Three golden goddesses descended upon the chaos that was Hyrule. Din, the goddess of power. Nairu, the goddess of wisdom. 
for all the goddess of courage. Din. With her strong flaming arms, she cultivated the land and created the Red Earth. Nairu. Poured her wisdom onto the earth and gave the spirit of law to the world. Faror. With her rich soul produced all life forms who would uphold the law. The three great goddesses, their labors completed, departed for the heavens. And golden sacred triangles remained at the point where the goddesses left the world. Since then, the sacred triangles have become the basis of our world's providence, and the resting place of the triangles has become the sacred realm. Thou must never allow the desert man in black armor to lay his hands upon on the sacred triforce. Thou must never suffer that man with his evil heart to enter the sacred realm of legend. That evil man who cast the death upo curse upon me and sapped my power. Because of that curse, my end is nigh. Thou, though your valiant efforts to break the curse were successful, I was doomed before you started. Yes, I will pass away soon, but do not grieve for me. I have been able to tell you of these important matters. This is Hyrule's final hope. Link, go now to Hyrule Castle. There, thou will surely meet the Princess of Destiny. Take this stone with you. The stone that man wanted so much that he cast the curse on me. You got the Kokiri's Emerald. This is the spiritual stone of the forest, now entrusted to you by the Great Deku Tree. I think they... It looks the best in this version to me. I just like the way that the textures look. I'm probably the only one who feels like this, but I just... It just looks... I don't know, it's just... My brain loves the way that this looks. The future depends upon thee, Link. Thou art courageous. Navi the fairy, help Link to carry out my will. I entreat ye, Navi. Good bye. Let's go to Hyrule Castle, Link. Goodbye, Great Deku Tree. Hey, Link, what did you do? The Great Deku Tree, did he die? How could you do a thing like that? It's all your fault. And everything I've done in this video normally takes me 20 minutes. Just skipping text and not talking to any of the NPCs. But anyway, that is it for now. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.